There's a lot of what? There's a lot of what? There's a lot of feedback. Right. Okay, guys, I, I got my video muted because I have very low bandwidth. I'm in a, a hotel in New Orleans for uh, the Society for Neuroscience meeting. So I will be muted that way. Um, trying to figure out where the feedback's coming from, huh? Uh, Jinza, can you hit mute? Yeah. No, not so clearly. Hit the mute button. Maybe. No. Let's see, Alex, can you mute? Sure. <laughs> that seems a little bit better. Oh, there we go. That seems a lot better. All right, and then Mike, as you're typing, I think we're hearing your keys on the keyboard, maybe. Oh no, it's Joe. Joe. What? <laughs> Your keyboard is very loud. Are you I typing? Just type, I just typed like four times. I know. It's like clackety clackety clack. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's just go around, Robin. Um, I don't have a lot to report this time, but I think that uh, many of you do. So um, I'll just go ahead and hand it over, I think, to. Um, well, let's see. Uh, Mike was the first one in, and Mike said that he had stuff to talk about. So, Mike, why don't you go ahead and take it away? All right. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I've now started using it, and I really like the open source grain. So, congratulations to everyone who's working on that. Or again, um, it seems really fantastic. I've been adding things to the wiki today. Um, second of all, um, I've got kind of some good news and some bad news. I'll start with the bad news, that uh, after implementing the calcium kinetics, the boiled calcium kinetics, and adding it to what Alex did, the potassium ki kinetics, I've kind of come to the conclusion, and I think uh, Podri can back me up in this, that there's something a little bit strange about the voltage clamp data, perhaps, and I'm not convinced that their, their models would ever really give us a spike in the cell model. But that's the bad news. The good news is that I decided to start from scratch and um, work on a very... Uh, Basic model with some simplified, with some big simplifications. You know, using the, using the boil ideas of fast potassium and slow potassium uh, and, and the calcium current. And I now have, um, I now have a muscle cell model which spikes and does look quite similar to the experimental data, which we can now think about a adding to adding to Andre's work and b feeding that into an optimizer. So to summarize, uh, bad news, uh, the coil paper might be a bit less useful than we had initially hoped. Good news, we have a working model for model. Bravo for working models. Okay. Um, and if you, if you go to that wiki page, you write at the bottom, there's an, there's an example of the muscle cell spiking. So where, where? So th this link that you've got here, the muscle, uh, the muscle wiki, the um, on the open source brain. Um, yeah, this is where the executable model lives right now. So the executable model is on GitHub. Right, but in terms of like the the entry point that we should yeah. uh, that we should mark. Okay, awesome. Uh, actually, I have something to say. Uh, in our GitHub repository, uh, it looks like something went wrong when uh, Mike merged 
the he changes his mind because it's kind of a mess in a in a source file. So I'll try to fix it today. Okay. So this this ex this this simplified model I have is actually on a different branch on that repository because since it wasn't since it's not really the boil model which I'm implementing there, it's kind of model from scratch. It's um, it's on a separate group branch called the calcium experiments. Maybe I should rename that branch. Awesome. So yeah, but main thing is, uh, it's my it's a very strong belief now that what we should work with is a simplified model rather than keep rather than continuing to try and implement the boil model and get it get a, a nice spiking set up that I don't think that will ever work. I think the voltage can play a good question for many situations. Yeah. Uh, the other uh, problem that I highlighted there in the newer MEL code was that uh, some of the figures they have there for the inactivation variables of the calcium channel uh, were a bit suspect. Um, it says in the paper that uh, the there's three um, um, let me see there are three rate variables there are effectively three rate variables for the calcium channel. Uh, F is supposed to be an inactivation variable, and it looks like an activation variable uh, according to the parameters set in one of the tables. The upshot of that is, yeah, the upshot of that is that um, with using those values, um, the calcium channel itself uh, won't actually activate uh, before about 150 milliseconds. So even if you use the figures that are in the table uh, for his um, optimized parameters, um, the calcium uh, channel would basically contribute no current. So it's basically only uh, pota two potassium currents, which is quite strange. And there's a few other details uh, missing from the paper, which would make it a little bit difficult to actually implement this, like uh, properties for um, the size of the cell and so on that would have to be guessed at. Uh, so, I mean, we can move it forward a little bit more um, and maybe um, try to get, uh, maybe Mike wants to get the implementation as close as possible to this uh, with which, whichever values, maybe the form or structure of the channels and so on. But uh, it might be an idea just to maybe start from scratch and be as explicit as possible about the um, uh, about the channels and the structure of the model. Just as a reminder, um, I don't know if it's it would be helpful or not, but um, we and I'm sure Alex pointed this out, but you know we we do have the source code for the original implementation of the Boyle model in in C code. So if there are things that are left out, in theory, that code should have everything, um, and we can stare at it a bit more closely if if that's desirable. Sure. I think the issue isn't isn't the code. I think the issue is that the experimental the experimental findings, what's ex experimental reported in that paper, in my mind, given the way this muscle cell spikes, probably wrong in many ways. Um, well, there's some there's some straight there's some things which are outright bizarre, like uh, two the so the fast loading channel and the slow slow charging channel. Different, different potassium. Yeah, sorry, the slow, the slow and fast potassium channels have different diversity potentials. But that's a bit strange. The, um, the leak current is, is positive, which is very strange. Um, there's just things which um, the very slow activation time for the calcium uh, current is completely incompatible with, with the spiking behavior of yourself. Um, I think what may have happened, well, it's just a guess, but somehow the, the voltage clamp controls have given very, have given results which are just not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, understandable. Well, this is, um, I mean, these are the things that you only find when you really go and do the hard work of, of doing this implementation. So um, you guys have kicked ass in getting to this point and you know really trying to reconcile this so I think um, I, I think the fact that you kind of hacked it um, as my understanding is to make sure that it would do something 
um, and to get as close as possible, I think is exactly the right thing to do for us to have something to then work with and move forward. And um, uh, I take your suggestions, um, you know, the direction that you want to go now very seriously. Um, I think we probably, just in the interest of time, I think we do a lot of things to get through. Probably we'll want to have another session just to kind of figure out the path forward here. I think, and, and basically, since you guys have been driving this, I'm, you know, whatever you think is the next thing is really the thing to do. But I just want to understand a little bit more from my perspective um, and see if there's anything else I can bring in as well about um, some conversations I've had with about the muscle cell physiology. So, um, but uh, this is awesome, awesome place to, to move forward from. And um, yeah, I, I think it's it's tremendous, uh, tremendous progress. And what I'd like to do now is just take this simplified model with some generator um, with Alex, work on optimizing it to the experimental data. Yeah. I mean, because I think that as far as experimental findings on experimental body plant data, I think it's, I've now come to the conclusion that there just isn't enough to go on and it's just better to work from scratch and optimize. What do you think, Alex? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Uh, at least I, I don't see any other direction. Yep. I mean, okay. If, the, if we get a model which spikes like the experimental data, it's a model. It's a it's a working model. It's fine. It's not based on not based on more fundamental experimental findings. But you can say, well, we don't think they exist. It's just more fundamental. Yep. It seems reasonable. Okay. Would it be an idea to try to use as much as possible from the uh, Boyle model? I mean, the uh, structure of the uh, rate uh, the, the channels as far as the rate uh, variables are concerned? Um, I mean, are what, you... Sorry, in what sense do you mean? So, so what are you actually optimizing on? All of the parameters in the rate variable, uh, in the um, channels themselves, or are you just, just going to adjust the uh, conductances and capacitance of, of the cell and so on? Okay, um, what I'd probably do is, what we should probably do is me and Alex should have a really good look at the simplified model and try and figure out, based on hand tuning, playing around, what is most amenable to optimization. That's, that's the smart way to do it, I think. Figure out, figure out, because some parameters will be very smooth in space and some will be not that smooth at all. The ones that are very smooth in space are the ones that don't really want to be optimizing. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, well, that uh, I think um, if that's all we got done in the last two weeks, it'd be awesome. But I know that uh, there are other things, so want to keep it moving. Um, shall we go to Mateo? Do you want to? You want to give updates? Um, I saw an awesome movie uh, that uh, got shown here in the last couple weeks. I think went out on social media. Maybe you want to talk. Talk with that. Uh, maybe we want to get that linked in to uh, this discussion. I actually, discussion. For, I actually yeah. forgot about that movie. Forgot that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Iteration, but it doesn't start. So uh, basically, we've been working with uh, with Joe, uh, trying to bring in the web sockets uh, that was uh, released uh, by the end of September. Uh, so basically, the uh, first thing we did was to try and use web sockets with the neural uh, simulation that we had, the sample simulation in the simulation engine. And uh, that worked, and that allowed the, uh, basically the thing that is shown in that video. Thanks for posting it. And uh, basically, the, the that video that actually Oreg took <laughs> at my desk uh, shows uh, the, the simulation getting streamed uh, to two different clients. One was my laptop, the other one was the iPhone, and um, and underneath the, the usual thing is happening there, so the running of the models on the, the Ashkenazi models on the GPU. So, but that was at the start of uh, this spring, uh, not this spring, this last two weeks and uh, basically uh, since then we we are we worked on trying to basically put in place the infrastructure to have the same kind of streaming 
for the particles so that we can use the SPH solver that Sergey ported from the C++ version to display the particles on the web. And where that is at the moment is a web meeting with uh, Sergey uh, Gleb and Giovanni on, um, uh, on Monday. And uh, basically we're, um, we're getting organized in terms of splitting the, the tasks with a list of things to do that uh, uh, we, are, we are going through. And basically pa part of the plan is putting in place a protocol so that we can have a, a representation that we can use to basically to go from the SPH simulation model, so all the particles with all the properties, but after, at every time step that that model gets transformed to a model which is used just for displaying purposes. And the same thing happens to Neuramel. So because uh, the front end we will be able to not only like SPH is kind of the first thing that can start with, but the next thing will be the neuronal simulation. So uh, basically, uh, we are working on defining a common model that we can use to transform from this simulation model, so from SPH model and from neuronal model, into this uh, display model we can call, and. Uh, and so, and that is ongoing, and we're making we're making good progress. I'm I'm focusing more on the neuronal visualization, and uh, well, Joe can speak for himself uh, in, in in a while. But basically, all all the efforts now are going to bridge this gap so that we can see the simulation that happens in the simulation engine as soon as possible. So um, this is what has. Been going and uh, I have to update some designs for the guy uh, by the end of this week, and we're meeting again. the flows work so that uh, as soon as we can have the particles moving on the uh, on the browser basically that will be a time uh, that uh, will spend more time again on the packaging uh, on the actual releasing documentation wiki but like we're trying to focus more on the development now so that we can get it to work and well, the, the sample c can be used at the moment, if that's what Mike was asking. Yeah, the sample can be used. I, 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 was, assuming, sorry, I was assuming you were talking about the mm, SPH stuff, but the sample works. The neuronal one that I used to take the video that works. And uh, also, okay. I'm, I'm going through um, an effort to uh, make uh, the, like, using, even from a development environment, uh, uh, the simulation engine to be even smoother than it is now. It's a moving target. We're improving little by little, and I'm doing more things now so that uh, we'll have all the manifests uh, generated automatically, so things that usually cause problems, or that sometimes do cause problems, uh, hopefully as soon as I'll be finished, the work is problems. All right, awesome. Sorry that I dropped out there. Um, okay, so Joe, did you have a chance to to sort of say your piece there under under Mateo's piece or? No, that's why it's uh, it's my turn. I think. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so it's, it fits into what Mateo was talking about. I'm just working more on the on a generic bundle. 
and uh, basically the idea is that uh, there's going to be some 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 simulation agnostic bundles that um, basically don't know about domain specific stuff they just look for a configuration file and in the configuration file you specify as if it was a project file you specify what kind of simulation you're running you link to the models so if it's, if, if it's a physical SPH simulation you link to the particles if it's a neuronal simulation you link to the neuroml anyway it's gonna look this configuration file up the generic bundle that I'm working on and uh, load up the simulation and run it in a, in a generic way and then gets the results and it's uh, and the results get streamed to the front end so there's a bit of work in terms of infrastructure in terms of actually loading configuration file defining what the configuration files look like um, dynamically load the simulators so basically you, you see in the configuration file that oh this guy wants to do a physical simulation okay so let Let's look at if if we have any physical simulation simulators defined in this configuration file available in our deployed uh, components. So you de you have to do that dynamically. So there's a bit of work figure figuring stuff out. Just trying to make it so that it's like as generic as possible. Uh, it, so basically working around that stuff. I I spent a bit of time to putting together a. Uh, something that will give an overview. I know that Matteo is working on a more more detailed document. So th this document that I'm linking, it's uh, actually uh, there's a lot of detail left out on purpose, but it should give an idea to everyone what what we're talking about. So if you follow, um, I'm just po gonna post a link, and this assumes that you have access to Lucid charts. I didn't manage to publish it uh, so that I could post an image but um, if you follow that link and go to the uh, bundle view it, there's, a, there's basically there's a kind of a high level picture of uh, what we're working on at the moment and it should be fairly intuitive to understand I, I could sh I can share my screen that's probably the best way to, to show you what I'm talking about um, Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Text is a little small though. Uh, I could zoom, but then it would. Uh, let me try and zoom it. I posted the. Uh, you something? I oh, he published it as an image. Okay, so if you click that image in the chat, you'll be able to. Oh, no, it's a different one though. Let's it's bundle view? No, uh, yeah, the one you published is not b b bundle view. You 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 posted another link. Oh, so uh, yeah. So the one that you see on my screen is different from the one you posted. But anyway, I, I'm just looking at my screen. If you if you manage to f to publish sorry. that, then uh, so ba basically, this one shows the bundles that we have in GitHub and how they talk to each other, or at least who they talk to, and high-level uh, structure of the, the situation that we're looking at. So this, the, um, the one that I was uh, pointing at is this uh, org.openwormsimulationengine.simulation, which is a, a domain agnostic bundle, and it will read the configuration file and run the simulation without knowing what it is. And and you see on the, on the right, there's a sim.config.xml and it's linking to particles or neuromail so that was what I was talking about and that's how all the bundles
to improve everything. Uh, it's obvious that um, I should um, modify uh, single liquid particle or parameters um, to make less weight because um, small one millimeter uh, long worm should not give uh, so much uh, splashes when falls. Um, so some kind of uh, different relations between uh, surface tension force, capillary effects, and uh, mass of the worm, mass of the worm, and so yeah, on. The mass it, seems, it looks like a very heavy worm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> big snake. Um, <laughs> Stephen, are you there? So, uh, this is all for well, now. Very good. And is that also uh, committed to the latest uh, in the GitHub repository? Uh, not yet, but it's not a problem. OK. OK, good. I definitely want to try out uh, running that. Uh, and you say it was um, Visual Studio 2008? Yes. OK, I'll try that out. Steven is only typing two of them. Okay. Um, who's next? Um, yeah. I think I am. Okay. Yeah, so I've been working on um, the, uh, using the car data set, <clears throat> trying to extrapolate similar information for um, C. elegans. I've been putting things out on the Dropbox. Um, I put an Excel spreadsheet out there yesterday. It shows the 45 to 46,000 genes that are involved in C. elegans. Um, so I'm, I'm basically <clears throat> working and focusing on that right now. And uh, what I'm doing next, uh, Stephen and I met last week. So what I'm doing next is I'm going to zero in on the neuropeptides and the process to, to, that, that the worm goes through the intracellular workings to create the neuropeptides and um, a lot, you know try to figure out the metabolites that are involved, the proteins that are involved, etc. and try to work out that process. So that's what I've been doing. A lot of data. Okay. Yeah, and, and can you guys hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Tim, Tim and I have been going back and forth quite a bit, um, and uh, and I think that um, he's turning up some really interesting stuff, especially when we're starting to look more at this from the perspective of getting down to to genes and proteins. So um, so thank you, Tim, for what you've been doing driving this, and um, I've been a little slow on emails this last couple. Uh, this last few days since I've been at this Society of Neuroscience annual meeting. But um, I'm going to be um, getting back to those and dropping this and so forth. So, all right. Um, I know that I keep dropping, so thanks for patience. Um, so, um, I'm just kind of looking around. So we've had several updates. Um, or you've chimed in on some things. Are there any other things that you wanted to, um, to address? It sounds like, I mean, obviously, you've been playing quite a role in this, you know, uh, in. At least when I've seen the commits coming in from the the neuromel side, as well, um, was there anything else that you uh, had? Well, I've mainly been working on the um, uh, open source brain stuff with Matteo. Uh, one other project that we've added there is I've had some contact with uh, Netta Cohen and her uh, Jordan Boyle and uh, the 2012 paper I mentioned last time on the uh, C. elegans locomotion model that they published. Um, I've added a link for in the chat for uh, a version of that which has been put on the Open Source Brain uh, website. And uh, she's quite keen to get her C code up there. Um, and get some elements of that into uh, NeuroML. So uh, she's quite happy to have that there and um, 
I mean, it'd probably be only be looked at after the other muscle cell model is um, fairly stable or we've exhausted that, but um, there is a network model in there as well. Uh, it also has a, a two-dimensional um, neuromechanical model, uh, but there's definite elements of that that can be pulled out, put into NeuroML, and be used in some way. That's really great. That's really great. I think that's it's a huge contribution to get this, the um, the the elegance computational community on a lot more of these open standards and having this stuff on these public repositories. So I think it's like it's ah that's so great. Um, that's really exciting. Okay, so I mean that, yeah, that one that video that uh, Matteo just showed there. I mean it would be great to have that in three D in some way, um, but yeah, it's a long way to go. It's the plan. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Sergey, um, are there any 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 updates? Uh, you tend to be a man of few words, but I just want to give you the floor just in case. Uh, uh, I'm working now on on the boundary particles with Andre, and uh, with him we created some scheme of SPH. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, at the Lucid chat, mm, uh, it it doesn't uh, complete. Uh, maybe I <laughs> show you sometimes <laughs> uh, in the future. Uh, so that's all, I think. All right, very good. Well, uh, Sergei um, uh, wanted to tell about one very important thing, um, data structure of um, our simulation um, in the context of um, OpenCL and parallel programming is quite uh, complex. Uh, and um, some uh, of the structures are um, uh, sometimes used um, Maybe in a strange manner. Uh, for example, uh, particles um, which are moving uh, use uh, coordinates, uh, velocities, and accelerations. And particles um, which uh, form the boundary or will form the boundary in the future uh, when Sergey will finish his work um, should contain um, each particle should contain normal a vector. Uh, to work correctly, but it doesn't need velocity. So, for such particles, uh, we use the same data cell as ordinary particle uh, has for velocity, but we store the normal. And um, so, every particle has um, its type, uh, boundary, uh, liquid, uh, or elastic matter, or maybe something else in the future. So, uh, all of this uh, and the changes in the structure uh, during the algorithm runs. Uh, became not becomes um, quite complicated, but still it works fine. But to keep it uh, <laughs> working fine, when the program complexity grows, uh, we need this uh, scheme which Sergey uh, mentioned, and uh, already it looks uh, quite uh, very good. Um, it shows uh, one step of the um, simulation. Uh, with uh, all the functions which um, uh, are called uh, in it um, and show uh, how different um, data structures change and in what order. Um, one color shows um, unaffected uh, data structure, uh, complete list. Um, another color, for example, green, is um, data structures which are used uh, at this step uh, for calculations uh, and uh, red uh, are those which will be changed uh, during this uh, step uh, and rewritten. So we see all the process and know how to um, introduce in it uh, new stuff when we modify and improve algorithms. This is great, great thing. That's all. That's cool. Uh, that's very useful. Um, 
and uh, also glad that we recorded that too because that, that was uh, that was kind of detailed, and I think that ha being able to go back and uh, refer to that um, as we're doing these these implementations will also be very helpful. Um, also, just on that on that subject, um, uh, Andre and I had a look over at what's going on in the Bullet uh, 3.0 uh, code base that's coming out. Bullet, of course, is the uh, is is an open source physics library that's integrated into a lot of different things, um, a lot of uh, game engines, for example, and um, uh, is has integration into Blender and this sort of thing. And there is a place for SPH in their in their in their three branch that hadn't existed when we first started this whole process. So um, I posted some messages there. On one of the issues, it's, I don't. No one's really gotten back to us yet, um, but I. But uh, you know, the code that uh, that Andres put together is actually much farther ahead than what they have. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they're interested in potentially, um, you know, uh, you know, taking some inspiration from the work that we've done and folding it back in uh, to to Bullet. Um, which uh, so it, it's always fun to know that we're ahead of uh, you know the curve on those sorts of things. Uh, but we can also gain some benefits from having something that's more integrated with, you know, the rigid physics, and and also certainly gain benefits from uh, having a larger community having a look at this, you know, at this at these algorithms. So um, the specific, uh, I'll post the specific link to the specific issue uh, here in a minute, so you can have a look at uh, yeah, at what's going on there. But that was that was an interesting opportunity. Hopefully they'll, you know, because it's only like two or three people I think that are on this particular piece of that. Um, of that project, but um, hopefully, yeah, you can read more about it. Uh, here's here's the sublink um, to see yeah, the SPH stuff. So hopefully, something will come of that. Okay, um, Jinda, what are you up to, dude? Yeah, hello. Hello. Uh, What's new? I basi yeah, basically, I'm working on the same problem as. Uh, Gates and Andre and and I, I think Professor has already explained enough. So I think I don't think I need to add anything else. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> Jinze can add uh, something. Um, <laughs> he has important um, well. Um, uh, so, um, he has um, advanced his uh, master's uh, thesis, um, which he was doing um, while participating in this work. Uh, so he got uh, excellent uh, mark, and um, I'm glad. Uh, I was his supervisor, and he worked uh, here in Novosibirsk during uh, his uh, education. Um, well. Bravo! Congratulations. So, okay. He got a success. In, in it. Um, people liked uh, um, his results. Congratulations. So, congratulations. Awesome. congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations, James. Well done. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it was just because uh, my professor, my supervisor was good. <laughs> <Very good. Excellent. laughs> okay. Um, oh, well. Uh, can you discuss one small question? Uh, about uh, neuro neurobiological um, stuff of um, uh, serigans. Um I was trying to look at uh, that um, microphotographs at uh, Catmate or how it's called correctly. Um, first of all, uh, I have noticed um, that they have only a uh, limited piece of uh, head segment and uh, nothing else. And um, another um, point is that um, uh, the resolution uh, is quite uh, limited. Um, 
we can hardly see from uh, those uh, microphotographs, uh, for example, synapses. Uh, only at um, small amount of pictures we can uh, determine or distinguish them uh, with good uh, probability. Uh, I've seen uh, another pictures of other um, uh, organisms, neurons, um, and um, you can conclude from them that we can see even uh, synaptic uh, vesicles uh, and so on with much higher resolution um, which allows um, to recognize them uh, without any uh, errors but here uh, in Seligans Resolution is limited and we have um, a source of potential errors. Um, and, well, as far as I know, Connectom is uh, far from complete, right? So, even if we have hope to um, fill um, data which is uh, absent right now, um, maybe it's still not yes. full. So, for this purpose, yes. how we can, how we plan to um, overcome it, to solve this problem? Yes. Is there any way? Let me, let me, let me see if my bandwidth holds up. Yes. Um, so, we, so there's a few different data sets. Um, the one that you're seeing with only a chunk uh, up at the top is one data set where they've zoomed in on a particular section that they wanted more magnification on. Uh, there are other data sets, like the ones that you can see at uh, the Open Connectome project, um, where they have the full um, they have the full body, but they don't have as much detail in certain pieces. So, um, so I mean, so we've put up our server. Um, and uh, but then there's also this one here that has um, a lot of the data from the original connectome and oh no, okay so this one also has some some has only some fragments as well um, in certain places like uh, so in some places it has a lot in some places it has less um, but um, what I think we should do Andre since you've been getting more into this and I've been um, and I, it's been a while since we've reconnected with um, our collaborator, who is the expert on this, Stephen Cook. Um, I think that we should basically connect, and he can lay out all the different data sets that are there. I think it'd be useful for us to just like have a document and understand what all the pieces are, because their lab is the one that just published recently a connectome paper on the mail, where they were looking at the tail of the mail, and they had like uh, added additional. Um, synapses that were previously unknown in the tail and they've they've got this whole area of like what uh, what is in high resolution and what is in low resolution very well understood so I think that if we just dedicate some time to like get back to that uh, to that project and have them explain all the data that are there um, I think that will make things uh, much more clear for everybody so um, I'm uh, I've got that email drafted now um, we can have a look at it. They're willing to share additional data sets beyond the ones that we've uh, got right now. So there are more than what's there. Um, that's not the only one. And uh, and some of them are in higher resolution as well. Um, the reason the low resolution that you're seeing there is because those were taken back. I think those were taken back in like the 80s. And, um, and you're right. Um, Electron microscopy has moved forward quite a bit since then. So there is higher resolution to be had. Um, we just have to just kind of coordinate that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So let me let me send that email and let's get get a session set up with you, me, Steve Cook, anyone else who wants to join, to really just get back into that uh, stuff. Tim, if you if you want to join with that, that would also uh, be great. If you're if you're if you're interested, obviously anybody else. Uh, Absolutely. Love to have you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right.
So yeah, that's that's that answer. And we do like the synapse position thing. I I, I apologize for not having driven it forward more. Um, it has been hanging a little bit. So we need to get back to that. We're at like the 95% zone. I was like, um, I did make progress a little bit this week. I, I um, now know how to take user accounts that we've created and add them to the instance of Catmate that we have so that we can, so that users can be permissioned to make edits on the project, which I was not obvious before from the documentation. So I just, with SFN and everything, um, that's been all a little bit. So I think in this next two weeks, um, we'll get back to that. OK, back on video view. Um, all right, are there any other general comments? Um, anybody has uh, directions, uh, questions, concerns, anything? One small thing from me. Yes. yes. Um, I've already just emailed Andre about this, and he sees everyone who's concerned. But um, at that meeting at UCL a few weeks ago, we had floated the idea of having a a proof of principle model whereby we integrate electrophysiology and fluid dynamics. And I think now we're possibly at quite quite a good situation to think about that. So I've, I've, as I say, I've already emailed Andrew and CC everyone who is interested in that, but I think it's, I think we can start thinking about doing that. Way. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Any, any, any comments? Well, what would you propose as the next step for that? Um, <clears throat> well, my, I think probably one of the best ways forward is, okay, so we've got this model which reproduces the electrophysiology, and what we had discussed at UCL was, um, and I, me writing the a wrapper in C++, which will run the simulation as Python simulation and expose expose variable, say the membrane potential or some other variable, um, expose a variable every nth time step, which Andre could then use to integrate with this model, and this expose variable could be used to compute the contraction, or rather to compute the force between between particles and allow the model to contract. Mm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, I suppose it's going to be quite um, an experiment to actually find out how you would actually describe something like this, how you would just basically interact and just, yeah, so it's quite a useful exercise. How it would interact and, and also um, just, I'm, cur I'm curious to see what would happen, to be honest. <laughs> Once, once you know, would it, you know, would it start, would it contract nicely when when the model was spiking and then relax again? And would depend on how we did it. And I'm gonna have to think about stuff like, uh, gonna have to think about stuff like um, the smooth end endoplasmic reticulum and how it how it cleans up calcium and stuff. Like it's it's a bit of a multiple problem. But my thought was the thing to do with me. What I could do is expose a variable at the end time step, which is a sort of contraction factor, which then, which then Andre could just use in a very naive way to, to compute an additional force. But we can discuss this by email rather than here yeah, because it's, it's quite technical. But, but, you know, we can discuss it here. Obviously, but I just thought I'd point it out. Okay. I'm having a little trouble hearing, so I'm having trouble commenting as well, Mike. So I apologize if there's more. If, if there's more to elaborate, or um, if you're not getting enough uh, feedback on on your your question, um, let's see if we can take take it to email. But I apologize. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I didn't hear yeah, it, you clearly enough. That's completely fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit. It's a bit too um, okay. Too technical, maybe to, to, to be discussed not by him. So. Okay. Okay. Well, um, it, is there anything else from the floor? No. Nope.
All right, guys. Well, then we'll call it. I think this has been a massively successful two weeks. Um, wow. The, the amount of stuff that's come out um, in the last two weeks from everybody is really, really exciting. You know, sometimes, you, you know, in the summer, you know, folks are running around and, and there isn't as much, uh, you know, progress. But, uh, wow, we are really kicking some butt uh, lately, and it is uh, really inspiring, and I'm extremely excited. Um, so just in the big picture, right, so our release... Uh, this is this is coming down to the end of our third release, and it's really nice that these pieces are coming together. Um, our third release was scheduled to end in November, which probably means the end of November. So um, we'll be looking to reorganize ourselves at the end of November and be thinking about kind of the next big push um, for the next six months after that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna tempt fate here with my um, with my bandwidth, but uh, yeah. So at the end of end of six months, we'll be kind of reevaluating what we. We're able to accomplish from our our big big picture goals, um, what we still need to work on, um, and that sort of thing. But um, so I mean, it'll it'll that'll be basically in two meetings from now. But uh, as we're making great progress, obviously as uh, as as we've always organized this, the people who really make the decisions about where we're going to go are the people who have been putting the time in to drive in a direction because they're scratching their own itch. So um, as you're doing this work and as we're making our our you know incremental steps. Uh, don't forget to keep the big picture in mind about where uh, we need to go, and um, you know it's never too early to start having those discussions and conversations about um, about that. So um, I'll be looking forward to you know getting ourselves sort of re-aimed on release four um, by the end of uh, by the end of November. But uh, I think that uh, we're going to see some even more exciting progress here in the next uh, in the next two weeks. Um, folks are really driving quickly. So um, thank you all. Um, again, I, every time I talk to people about this project, it's kind of one of the most exciting things they've heard of. So and you know, and I always have to, and I and I also have to say, you know, I really I, I can't take you know any credit for it. I I we, we put these meetings together, but really, it's it's the passion I think that we're all sharing and we're all seeing about what we can do in this simple system uh, together and how many ways that it uh, ties in with things that we already want to do. So um, I. Continually excited by the passion. It's it's really fun to get to tell people about it, and it's really fun to show people about it and see how excited they are when they see these new movies come out, or you know they get to play with the warm browser and they're like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. So um, you know I, I've been getting some of that feedback here, you know at SFN. So I'll I'll close out now so I don't keep blabbering on. But thank you again for everything you guys are doing, um, and um, you should really feel proud about you know what we're accomplishing together. I certainly feel really proud about what we're, what we're all doing. Um, so it's really rocking. So, um, okay. On that note, I will uh, I will see you guys again in uh, in two weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Great. Thanks, see guys. You guys. Thanks, bye. 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 Cheers. Bye. 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 bye.